Hey guys, so normally, as you probably know, on this channel, I typically do design analysis of existing products and just sort of look at their industrial design. I think it feels more appropriate right now to focus on the graduating class of industrial designers for 2020. More specifically, I'm just gonna tell you some things that I wish that I knew when I was graduating. So I'm drawing on about 10 years of industrial design experience. I've worked in tiny little companies with three people in them. I've worked in big multinational corporations. I've freelanced and I've worked full time and everything in between. So I think that my experience should be pretty useful to you. Now, we're just gonna get right into it. We're gonna go through a couple of these things. So the first one, industrial design is competitive. Now, technical skills are a given. It's just assumed that you will have them. Everyone who has a job in this field has a base level technical skill set. Now, that alone won't land you a job. It's just sort of this bare minimum requirement that you have to meet. You need to be able to sketch, 3D model, render, and make physical prototypes on a professional level right off the bat. Now, if you're missing one or more of those skills, it's really just kind of a non-starter. So let's say you're not very good at sketching, for example. I make hiring decisions in these companies and I can probably find somebody who has the same conceptual ability as you, but also has the sketching skills that you don't. So I'm not saying that you need to be an expert in all of these things, but you do need to have a baseline proficiency. Now, in order to understand what that baseline proficiency is, just go on Instagram or Behance. Look at other junior designers' portfolios who work at companies that you want to work for as well. Generally speaking, your portfolio needs to be at least as good as current designers who are already there in order to get a job at that place. Now, this applies to all levels of seniority, by the way. I still do this today. Michael DiTullo gave me this little nugget a couple years ago, and it's super helpful. The next thing is that it helps to pick a focus or a specialization. So if you're very skilled in one area, it helps you to be more competitive in the job market. So Tim Zarkey actually mentioned this in one of his videos, and I agree with it 100%. I'll link that in the description as well. But basically, you can either focus on a specific product category, let's say housewares or VR or shoes, or you can focus on a specific skill, let's say 3D modeling, parametric design, Tim focuses on rendering, that kind of stuff. So you just need to make sure that your technical skills are up to snuff and make sure that your portfolio is at a level that's competitive with other graduates. The next thing is getting to the point. So your job as a designer is to solve a problem and you need to do it quickly and do it effectively. Now, this is a principle that applies to pretty much every aspect of the design process. If you're a design leader, you need to clearly communicate the overarching product vision to the company and your team. If you're a junior designer, you need to do the same thing, but on a smaller scale. You need to work quickly in your concept development because people aren't paying you to make beautiful art. They're paying you to deliver on a concept quickly. Over time, you'll figure out what's important to include when presenting a concept, whether you're drawing it, 3D modeling it, building it, whatever, and what isn't. In sketching, for example, just using this as an example, it's all about economizing your lines. So there's always this balance between doing the best presentation with the least amount of effort and time investment. So working quickly and really getting to the point of what your presentation is or what your concept is is really important. The next thing is making the company money. So it's not about you, it's not about fulfilling your creative vision. It's about using your skill set to fulfill your company's or client's business goals. You want to think about how your design is going to make the company more money or save the company money. So how do we do this? So you wanna relate the design features back to the goals of the business. More specifically, let's just say you're designing a tool for a commercial kitchen. That environment is really fast paced, really stressful. In that environment, touch points need to be very clearly visible for both safety and efficiency reasons. So you want your designs to focus on helping your user achieve their goals and in turn make the client more money. So in this commercial kitchen example, making touch points clearly visible is going to allow the workers to make fewer mistakes when they're preparing orders. Fewer mistakes means fewer returns from customers and fewer returns from customers means happy customers and more money. Now, 
This is important because it takes the subjectivity out of the discussion. Design can be very subjective if you're not careful with it. So the client can say, well, I don't like red. Now, that is a trap. You don't want to even go down that road. What you instead need to say is, well, red is actually a good color for this detail because it makes the touch point clearly visible in this stressful commercial kitchen environment. We did some tests and the workers make fewer mistakes and therefore we have fewer customer complaints from wrong orders when we use this color. Suddenly, the client is significantly less likely to request arbitrary changes and they're much more likely to trust you because now they know that you are thinking in terms of the goals for the business. So the next thing is that design is kind of this misunderstood field. It's relatively new and a lot of people don't really understand what design is and what its function is within a company. So it's your job to educate them, but in a way that they will understand it. Other non-designers will understand it. Now, you don't want to be condescending. You don't want to complain about being the misunderstood designer. Instead, use this approach. Take the time to understand other people's disciplines and what their goals and priorities are within a business. That way, when you're presenting your design to them, you can speak in terms that they relate to. So for example, if you're speaking with an engineer, it's generally best to focus on ease of manufacturing and efficiencies or other things that they're concerned with. They're not as concerned with color and form details because that's your job. Once you've gotten their respect and trust, then they'll start to express interest in understanding principles of design. And this sort of thing takes time, but it starts with really trying to understand where they're coming from first. So on that note, you don't wanna talk about like pretty bevels or nice color contrast. It's your job to understand and interpret those things. It's not theirs. So you can talk about these things with other designers and you can break design details down because that's critically important to your craft and your success in this field. But when you're talking to non-designers, you wanna talk about how it's going to solve their business problem. Talk about design in a way that they will understand it. The next thing is that probably 99% of your concepts will never make it to market. Now, the reason for this is that the production process is exorbitantly expensive. A lot of things need to go right in order for your designs to make it to market. And most clients and companies are incredibly risk averse. Most designers are trying to do new and interesting things. That's inherently risky. You're going to have to fight tooth and nail to get any sort of concept built that's outside of the norm. And the best way to sell your ideas is, once again, to relate them back to the company's goals. All right, that is the way that you do it. Now, on the note of why things often don't make it to market, it really just comes down to manufacturing and the costs associated with it. And because of that, it's really important that you have good knowledge of manufacturing because if you don't, the engineers will be making design decisions for you. Now, you need to understand things like pricing, how things are made, minimum order quantities, material swatches and samples, manufacturing feasibility. Now, the best way to do this is to basically talk with other manufacturers and talk with engineers, look up on YouTube how things are made if you're designing that specific thing, and that will give you a lot of insight into how to design your products. The next thing is to just learn from others. Now, you wanna treat your employment like a design research project. Talk to others and learn everything you can from them, especially if they're from another discipline and especially if they're much more senior than you. If you're young, most senior level people, whether it's designers, engineers, whatever, will happily help you out if you show a genuine curiosity in their job. If you ask lots of questions and show an interest in other people, you'll not only learn a lot, but you'll forge relationships that will last for the rest of your career. So I think that pretty much sums it up. I hope that it was helpful. Ask lots of questions, always be sharpening your skills and learn from everyone that you can. If you guys ever have questions for me, feel free to message me on any number of mediums, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever. I'll do my best to give you help and give you advice in a timely manner. I'm happy to look at your portfolios and give feedback. Like I said, I've been working in the field for 10 years and I'm happy to help.